So back in 2010, 2014, MMA was just creeping into the mainstream and the UK still dreamed of having a world champion. Our biggest hope, the fastest rising star at that time, was John the Hitman Hathaway. John has a record of 17 and two. He trains out of one of the most renowned, one of the most notorious, one of the most successful gyms in the world, London Shoot Fighters. Two. There you go, now you're good, now you're good. Two, fast. The coaches there have been with him since day one, and when you hear about how they talk about him back then, that's when you realise just how good he was. Hathaway's been a, a talent since the very beginning of uh, when he started fighting. Solid ground, solid stand-up, uh, great submission skills. You know, he's a, he, he was a super talent. Yeah, I could see him as a UFC world champion at the time. I could see him getting that belt. It wasn't just his ability. Other people would say to me, yeah, this, this kid's going to be a world champion. Or if not, you know, he's going to be as close as you can get to the one. So I always heard stories about him. It's been great when he came back to actually feel how good he is. John Hathaway got the call for the UFC at the age of 22. He had decimated, destroyed all the competition on the UK scene. He was undefeated in 10 fights. He had finished his last four opponents and now he was set to make his UFC debut. Imagine that at the age of just 22. You get called up, you're sitting in the pocket, your music hits, curtains open, you get to walk in, you hit the cage, Bruce Buffer's in there introducing both of you, you know, it's uh, literally feelings what dreams are made of for me. Then look at his UFC record. Look who they tested him against and look at the performances he put in. I mean, take the first three fights. He fought Tom Egan, the Irishman, on enemy territory in front of 9,000 Irish fans in Dublin and he finished him in one round. Then they put him against an American wrestler, Rick, the horror story. He out-wrestled him, he dominated him. Next, they put him against MMA legend Diego Sanchez. Diego, the nightmare Sanchez. That was John's debut on American soil and he manhandled one of the scariest fighters to ever compete in the cage. I got so much experience from competing against the best people in the world for a long period of time and uh, you know, I loved every minute of it. In 2014, his performances had earned him his first main event slot. Uh, that fight was against Dom Young Kim and that gave him his first KO loss. Now, this is MMA. That was a loss, they happen. And John was still 26 years old, so we all thought, we all thought he'd be back, but none of us thought it would take eight years until we'd see him make that walk again. But in those eight years, he's been facing a battle harder than any fight he ever fought in the cage. When I was competing in the UFC, uh, you know, I got diagnosed with uh, ulcerative colitis, which eventually made me pull out of the uh, free matches. That was always the tragedy about it. You know, it was, you know, it wasn't his own fault. It wasn't him, you know, going off the rails or getting distracted. It was a, a really nasty, horrible medical condition. With this condition, with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease and all these things, they interfered with your gut. Part of his gut had to be removed. His bowel had to be removed. The intestines had to be removed. He would get a scratch on his thumb. Anyone would, and it wouldn't heal. It would become infected. And he, or he would, you know, have to cancel coming to train that day because his body just wouldn't do it, and we would be taking gaps and having to have that conversation where you can't do this fight, and it's so, all you know. You can see it, you know, really affecting him and breaking his heart. Fighting with these sort of illnesses, it was. I mean, it shows his metal, it shows his gut. The kid's just super tough. It definitely affected my body, and the medications I had to go on to kind of like control it and suppress it definitely made it harder to kind of compete, which is why I ultimately made the decision after the third time I pulled out, which is the, the kind of Nelson fight, to take a break off. So for people who don't understand what ulcerative colitis is, it's a disease where basically the body attacks itself. It affects the upper bowel, causing horrible symptoms and side effects. The treatment starts with some nasty medication and then in severe cases, surgery. John was one of those cases. He had three major surgeries in total, one which removed four kilograms of his intestine. Then he had to have an external bag fitted, a stoma, a colostomy bag, and then he had to have that internalized. Facing that, those decisions themselves must have been difficult. But just try and imagine what that must have been like, going through that mentally when you add on top of that your dream, the dream you had achieved of fighting at the highest level had been taken away at the same time. I guess there was some dark times. I was always a, a fairly positive person and, and had a good bunch of people around me, whether it be family, wife, you know, friends, training partners. He had to realise he had to go through surgery, he had to wear a bag in his stomach. I mean, this is stuff that's really hardcore, that, you know, would flatten out a lot of people and they wouldn't, they wouldn't, get, they wouldn't be able to get back into the sport after that. We all have our, our, our darkness, we all have our, our bad days, but ultimately it's the love for what you do that pushes you through that. Again, it's been two years since, since the surgeries, but 
taken some time to kind of build my strength back up and be able to get back to being fit and healthy, but we managed to do it. So here we are. It's taken everything physically, mentally to get into this position, but he's back. He has an opponent, he has a date, and we will see John the Hitman Hathaway finally make that walk back to the cage October 15th, Octagon 36 in Frankfurt, Germany. And again, this has taken eight years. That journey must have taken something special, something deep inside to keep that dream alive. So John's love for combat, his love for sport, his love for competition, his love for being on that big stage is what ultimately pushes him through and gets him back to where we are now, which is eight years on. Like you said, fighting you know, the biggest show in Europe on a huge stage. I can't wait. I've been so excited for this. I mean, I always love going to Octagon anyway. It's one of my favorite shows in the world to be on. The crowd is amazing. The Czech uh, people, and now the German people, but the Czech people are super excited about fighting. So look, he is back, but the question, the question on everybody's lips is, will he be as good as he was back in the early days? Now, mixed martial arts is a sport that moves faster than any other, and eight years out of competing is a lifetime. When you speak to his coaches, when you speak to his teammates, and when you speak and hear from John himself, they truly believe that they can still shock the world. I think the reason why I, I think I can obviously still compete at such a, a good level is because of the people and training partners I have around with me. They're, they are physically competing still at this level. You know, so if I can't compete with them, then I wouldn't think I'd compete at this level. You know, the fact that he still wants to do it at this level, and he can do it at this level. When we sparred him with his top-end guys, he's not walking in, he's not getting an easy time. The sparring sessions are horrifying, they're, they're hard work. He's sparring everybody and doing a great job. I'd say he's already a complete fighter, but he found those little edges again to, to bump himself up a little bit more. There's so many questions around his return. How will he look? How will he handle being back and making that walk again? For me, for me, just look at how he's handled those last eight years. That's the mark of the man. Whatever happens, him making that walk again is a victory itself. And seeing and hearing the belief him, his teammates, his coaches all have makes me excited and wonder what we will see on October 15th. He's going to put his heart, his soul on the line. It's super hard to kill a guy that likes their job. You know, when you're hitting a guy and they're like, oh, this is, I love being here, that's a hard guy to beat. That's the best thing about this kind of sport and this, these kind of shows, you, you get to prove, you get to see it. It'll all be on display on the 15th. The most dangerous guy to face is the man who truly wants to be there. The one who's faced more outside the cage than they ever will in it. This is what makes me so excited for his return. This is what makes me excited for his Octagon debut. Because this, this is not a story of redemption. This is not a comeback story. This is a resurrection. This is the resurrection and the return of John the Hitman Hathaway.